don't eat the cloth. Tara the Terrible. That's what Michael Webster calls his bratty little sister. She loves getting Michael in trouble, making his life miserable. Things couldn't get any worse. Then, Mr. Webster brings home the antique cuckoo clock. It's old, it's expensive, and Mr. Webster won't let anyone touch it. Poor Michael. He should have listened to his dad. But someone put a spell on the clock. A strange spell. A dangerous spell. And now Michael's life will never be the same again. Welcome everyone to Goosebumps Overviews, the show where we talk about Goosebumps books and judge them on their merit. Tonight's episode is book number 28, The Cuckoo Clock of Doom. And you know I'm serious because the shirt's coming off, or the jacket. Whatever, you know, I wear a jacket for most of these, but uh, I'm not now, so um, let's get into the Cuckoo Clock of Doom and see how many times I can fuck up the title by slurring my words. Here's the cover for A Cuckoo Clock of Doom, and I have to say I really enjoy this cover. The blue clock, the cuckoo sticking out right at you. This would be a really interesting 3D cover, in my opinion. I mean, just seeing that popping right at you, ooh, scary. Yeah, uh, but if I did have to say one thing, it might be a little misleading to the younger reader, because the cuckoo clock doesn't exactly appear much in the story, even though it takes, like, the main focus of the conflict. So take that as you will. I like the house this cuckoo clock is in, and from that, I enjoy the cover. I just wish my copy of the book wasn't, you know, falling to pieces. The Cuckoo Clock of Doom stars the character Michael, and... Hmm, well... This one has a lot of developed character, which I've been complaining about through a lot of the books. They don't have developed character. But Michael, we get to see his whole life story and learn a lot about him. And to be honest, he's kind of pathetic. So let's uh, go in a little bit deeper about Michael. Michael is a troubled young man. Most of his issues stem from his little sister Tara, who constantly torments him and gets away with it because she's the younger sibling. Probably something you might have dealt with in your life. Me, I... I've never actually dealt with that, considering I have no siblings. But regardless, I can see why that would be such a pain, considering no matter what Tara does to Michael, or does to anyone in the household, Michael will always be blamed, no matter how much ev evidence is prevalent. Which is probably one of the most irritating things in the book. The parents in this story make me want to beat the shit out of them. They are so idiotic, so ignorant, that they refuse to notice that their daughter is the cause of all these woes. Michael! Michael? He won't leave me alone. What? She's the one. She's always doing this to me. He's lying. Michael, what are you doing with that? I want that cleaned up and you too. I got you good. Almost as good as at your party. But, my, it's a little bit of Michael's fault, too. Let's face it, he's kind of an idiot. So through all this torment, Michael never really lashes out at his parents. He always lashes out at his sister. I can understand why they would do that. Stein is want to influence kids to lash out their parents for... I don't know. Gee, I think moms would be more pissed off about that series if that was influenced from there. Not that they would even bother reading it. Because, you know, people get angry about things. They don't even bother doing any research. Yeah. But to get back at Terra, Michael decides to mess with this new cuckoo clock. Cuckoo clock that his father recently bought. Supposedly, it's a secret, ancient, amazing cuckoo clock with a historical past. 
and magical properties. His father's been eyeing it for the past 15 years, supposedly, in an antique shop right across from, I guess, his father's store. So Michael one night creeps into the study and twists the head of the cuckoo clock backwards as to frame Tara for messing with the clock, and then she would finally get in trouble, and not Michael. I don't see how that would change anything. It's not like that's going to stop his parents from ever believing him ever again. Okay, come on. There's like lines in this book where the parents are, Oh, Michael, stop making up lies. You're a fucking liar, Michael. Michael, Michael, stop being a liar. Michael, stop being a pussy. Oh, Michael. Michael, Michael, Michael. What's wrong with you? So, because of what Michael did, time is now flowing backwards, and poor Michael can't seem to figure out what the issue is. Okay, so he figures out pretty fast that it was because he tampered with the clock, but it takes him forever to realize that the clock is, isn't in his house, or where the clock has gone to, and by the time he realizes that the clock has all along been in this antique store right across from his father's office, he's in second grade. Oh my god, Michael, you're an idiot. <laughs> Michael often says throughout the book that he feels like he's a robot going through a destined path, which plays around with the ideas of fate in a story, which is kind of commendable for a kid's book. However, it doesn't really play with it well enough, because I feel like he's still an, he's an idiot. Because he's an idiot, a lot of these things that he's done could have been avoided. Regardless, that doesn't happen. Nothing really changes until the twist at the end. So yeah, the twist at the end is probably the best in the series so far. It provides an interesting philosophical question about how a one person might have affected your life in certain ways, and whether your life be better or worse without it. Well. I guess you could say it's the, uh, butterfly effect. The book uses the butterfly effect, in a sense. Not as much as you would think, but it uses it. And it redeems the parent characters. At least I would hope so. They still very much irritate me. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna have to give this book a 7 out of 10. Enjoyed it. Does drag in the middle, though. And Michael's idiocy is irritating, along with the parents. But the parents provide, I guess, an interesting conflict. Also, before we go, one thing I have to mention. Why would you ever tell your parents that time is moving backwards? Why would you think they would believe you? That does not compute. Hey, Michael! I'm supposed to serve your guests first! <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my review of A Cuckoo Clock of Doom. I hope you enjoyed, and make sure to stay tuned for next episode when we talk about Monster Blood 3. I was scared.